company rolls into its second month. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg has announced economic support for New South Wales and now for Queensland. He joins me live from Melbourne. Treasurer, Australia bounced back very well from the lockdowns last year. How worried are you about the economic impact of the lockdowns in Greater Sydney? Well, there's no doubt that the lockdown in, in Sydney, our largest economy, uh, state economy, is, is going to be significant. Uh, and we'll see that play out in the national count numbers and no doubt in, in labour market data. But at the same time, the fundamentals, Shari, of the Australian economy are very strong. And we saw the economy bounce back last year after successive quarters of negative economic growth to the fact that we had unemployment at 4.9 per cent uh, earlier this year, uh, the lowest in more than a decade. And the number one issue that businesses were talking about were labour force shortages uh, and uh, the need to, to get more workers. So I'm confident that our health professionals can get on top of these outbreaks. And when they do, uh, the track record of the Australian economy is that it does rebound strongly and that should give us confidence going forward. In the meantime, though, Greater Sydney is headed for an extended lockdown, five weeks, at least another four to go and perhaps longer mm. after that. Do you expect we're looking at a technical recession? Well, those terms refer to two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth and nothing before me suggests that that definitely will happen. Uh, what we do know is that the September quarter will take a hit. Uh, but again, the the record of the economy is that once you contain these outbreaks, once you suppress the virus, we do see a very strong bounce back. And we are putting a lot of money into the economy, joining with the New South Wales government in a 50-50 split for business support. And also the federal government providing the vast bulk of income support with payments as high as $750 a week uh, to many thousands of people across New South Wales. The combination of that economic support as well as the money that was built up on household and balance sheets over the course of the last year, I think puts us in a strong position going forward. And we did outperform the rest of the world uh, in the uh, over the course of the last year. We have seen our economy become bigger today than it was going into the pandemic. And we've seen 160,000 more people in work today than going into the pandemic. No other advanced economy has that track record. So I think your viewers tonight, uh, the, uh, uh, the market economists, uh, many other people working in the business community should have a great deal of confidence about the resilience and the fundamentals of the Australian economy. Treasurer, do you worry about how our future generations will pay off this lockdown debt? Well, there's no doubt uh, we are going to uh, face uh, a higher debt burden going forward, but there was no alternative. Uh, when uh, Australia entered into the crisis last year, Treasury came to me and said that unemployment could reach as high as 15 per cent. That's more than two million people unemployed. And as I said, we've now got an unemployment rate at the lowest in a decade at 4.9 per cent. That means we've saved a generation of Australians from long-term unemployment. Now, the economists call that the scarring of the labour market, and we prevented that. And programs like JobKeeper have helped save the country, uh, together with the cash flow boost and all the other initiatives that we've put in place. It's very much been a Team Australia moment. Yes, there's going to be a higher debt burden, but the cost to the economy would have been far greater. The cost to the community would have been far greater if we didn't take the actions that we did. Yeah. Look, on Friday night, uh, the Prime Minister announced a target of 70% vaccination before the lockdowns become less likely and 80% before our borders mm. open up internationally. I mean, when you look at the data, UK only has 50% fully vaccinated, Israel 62%, the US sits just below 50%. Is this an unrealistic expectation for Australia to get 80% fully vaccinated? I don't think it is, uh, and I do believe that we will get uh, to above seventy to above seventy percent. And what we've seen is uh, more and more people this getting year? the jab, as particularly as more supply. Well, what we are endeavouring to do is give everybody the opportunity uh, to have their dose this year, and that's that's our goal. And we've seen more than a million 
of the uh, Pfizer doses coming in each week. And that, as you know, Shari, goes to 2 million. We've seen more than 12 million people uh, receive uh, receive a uh, or 12 million jabs already being delivered. Uh, we've seen around 40% of the eligible population uh, receive a jab. And importantly, the more vulnerable cohorts, like the over 70s, we're nearly at 80% of the uh, the proportion of, of that so, community so having received a jab. So, so just I'm to go back to the original the question, vaccine you think, rollout gets, gets paced. So you think 70% is realistic, but 80% is not? No, I think both 70 and 80% are realistic. Uh, but obviously you've got to hit 70 uh, first and that's what we're striving to do. And the good thing about the plan that was agreed in principle by the uh, states and the territories and the Prime Minister last Friday was that everyone uh, has a stake in the outcome. Uh, states need to meet those targets within their own jurisdictions as well as the national target. And we've seen from international experience that vaccinations not only reduce serious illness, but they also reduce uh, substantially the death toll. And Australia has avoided to date the fate of other nations uh, in that less than 1,000 people have lost their lives in Australia due to COVID, whereas in the UK it's 130,000. And indeed, if we had suffered the average loss of life that you'd seen across the OECD, more than 30,000 souls yeah, would have been I, I lost. Know, so not only on the economic front and the health front, we've done well. Yeah, I mean, four million globally, it's, it's beyond devastating. Treasurer, before you go, mm. former Greens candidate and barrister Julian Burnside, who ran against you, he published a tweet last week, or this week rather, that said this. He said, the curious mm. thing about the Israeli stance is that their treatment of Palestinians looks horribly like the German treatment of the Jews during the Holocaust. When you objected to that online, his wife... Kate Durham then tweeted saying, as I told you once, and this is she speaking to you on Twitter, as I told you once, I suspect Burnside knows more about the Holocaust and its subsequent trials than you. As a teen, the Holocaust propelled him into a concern for human rights and refugees, which can't be said of you. You are just a Hungarian, just a liberal, Frodenberg. What an outrageous, disgusting tweet. Julian Burnside then didn't back away from his views. Jared Henderson in The Weekend Australian this weekend asked him if he'd visited Israel and he told Jared, no, I haven't visited Israel or Gaza, but I watched the ABC and the SBS news. The simple fact is that Israelis kill a lot of Palestinians. Certain, certainly the numbers are nowhere near the number of Jews killed during the Holocaust, but the reasons are substantially the same. Treasurer, how upsetting is it that the Greens party gives a platform to candidates who hold this sort of view? Well, it's very concerning that uh, any Australian, let alone one who seeks uh, to be elected to the Parliament of Australia, holds these views. Uh, Burnside's tweets were insensitive, they were indefensible and they showed a complete lack of understanding or knowledge about uh, you know, history's, uh, you know, one of history's greatest and most tragic events, uh, namely the Holocaust. And what should be really concerning uh, to people more broadly is that um, with the year, as the years go past with the Holocaust, people fail to understand or appreciate um, the scale of the loss of life and the destruction. And it was not just the six million Jews and the one and a half million children who lost their lives, but it was also homosexuals, uh, gypsies, the disabled, uh, and many, many uh, others. And uh, you may remember um, that General Dwight Eisenhower uh, helped liberate the camps uh, in 1945 yes. uh, from, uh, from German occupation. Yes. And he said at the time, Okay. that there would be a day when the rest of the world uh, did not believe that this devastation and destruction had occurred. And, and it was incumbent make... upon everyone to remind everyone of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, thank you very much for your time this Sunday evening. My pleasure.